Welcome back everyone. So today we are getting started on the skirt portion of our Sally ball gown. Oh my God, we've made it to the skirt. If you uh, missed this last week's video, which was on the bodice, I will make sure to have it linked in the description as well as the cards right here. I also have a video on how I made the petticoat that's going underneath this. And I think that it is incredibly vital to the shape that I end up creating at the end of this video with this gown. Um, so I de I'm gonna put it in the description below and I'm gonna highly recommend if anyone follows this uh, like method or makes a dress like this to consider having a hoop and petticoat under it. It's really just gonna help make the, the silhouette pop. Um, so yeah, let's start this video off with saying, hey, if you like sewing and you like Disney and you like historical fashion and you like pretty things, subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up and comment below. I'm going to start doing a question of the week. We'll see how long this lasts. This week's question is what is your favorite Disney animated movie? All right. That's very important. What is your favorite? Disney animated movie, please um, answer in the comments below. And um, also before we get started, I'm going to list all of the materials I use below. However, I'm not going to list um, amounts. I'll, I'll list how many yards I purchased of stuff, but I don't know the exact amounts I used because it's all patchwork. Um, and some of it was used on the bodice and some of it was used on the skirt. Um, so I'm going to list those things below. Some of them are affiliate links. You guys know that just means that I get a percentage if you click that link. So yeah, I guess let's make ourselves a skirt. For Sally's skirt, I had planned to make a three quarters length ruched skirt over a full length circle skirt. So to start, I needed to do some math. Luckily, there are a few websites online, I'll link them in the description, that can help with circle skirt math. My problem was that I only purchased two yards of 120 inch wide black cotton sateen to use for this part. So I was gonna have to do this in panels instead of one full cut of a circle. The circle skirt length I, I chose was 40 inches and my radius measurement happened to be 4.5 inches. So I did some playing around with circle placement on my fabric off camera and I figured out the best way I could make this work. For the ruche skirt, I tried to remember what I had done for my bell dress and I know that the ruching was several trapezoids put together to make the shape. So after performing a lot of math that makes absolutely no sense when I watched this sequence I filmed. I decided to make six trapezoids that were 27 inches wide at the bottom, 12 inches wide at the top, and 58 inches long. Later in the video, we find out that six trapezoids were not enough, and I end up making eight total instead. To prep my circle skirt for cutting, I measure 46 inches from the center of the circle, and I place a pin there, move my tape measure, and then place another pin at 46 inches. And once I have enough pins to denote a circle or half a circle and quarter circle in my case, I cut into my fabric. I turned the trapezoid piece into a paper pattern because consistency, then use that to cut out my panel pieces. After having my circle skirt pieces hang overnight, it was time to add a bit of stability to them. This cotton sateen was a bit lighter in weight than the Spoonflower cotton sateen, so I added some Power Boost lining to it so that it would have a bit more body. Power Boost lining is a fusible interlining that I've used a couple times in this channel to help with the opacity of a fabric as well as give the fabric extra body while working with it. To apply this interlining, I'm gonna need help from Wonder Woman. That's right, Wonder Woman is all over my pressing cloth and to apply Power Boost lining, I use my pressing cloth and my iron with no steam set to the silk setting and I press away. 
I like to start at the very edge of my fabric piece and then press and hold for five seconds and work my way into the depths of my piece. Then I went ahead and surged all of my edges. For the back two quarter circle panels, I pinned them right sides together with a 10 inch opening at the top to get it on and off. This edge happened to be cut on the salvage so I didn't have to overlock it. I'm going to press this seam open so that I can stitch it down and this will create a nice clean edge for the closure at the top. Before sewing up the side seams, I need to place my pockets. Yes, this dress does have pockets. To do this, I measure four inches from the top, place my pocket piece with the right side facing the right side of the skirt, pin it in place, and then repeat for the other side of the front panel. The pockets get stitched down and then the fabric gets pressed away from that seam. Now with the right sides together, I can pin the front half circle to the back now half circle, but it is two quarter circles sewn together. And I will also pin around the pocket pieces so that I can sew this up. Now moving on to the hem, I'm adding a one and a half inch strip of horsehair braid to the hem to add a bit of pizzazz to the bottom of the skirt. I do have an in-depth tutorial on using horsehair braid that I will link in the cards as well as the description, but to start I add a little bit of bias to the ends of my horsehair braid and then I pin the horsehair braid to the right side of my fabric. My hem is very long and therefore this step takes me quite a bit of time to do. I sew the horsehair braid down about a quarter of an inch away from the bottom edge of the hem. Then I flip the hem over, pin it down, and sew it inside the hem about a half an inch away from the edge. And now the circle skirt is complete. Moving on to the ruched skirt. After cutting out my six panels, I folded them up and set them aside so they needed to be ironed before serging the edges of each panel. I do this exactly like I did my panel pieces for my circle skirt, leaving the bottom um, unhem or bottom hem unserged as well as the top. <laughs> For the hem of the ruched panels, I decided to do a narrow rolled hem. I start this by folding and pressing the hem down by one quarter of an inch. Then I fold and press it again by a quarter of an inch, encasing my raw edge in the two folds. Now I can stitch this down and I repeat this for every single panel. So I thought the next step should be to add gather stitches to every single panel. To add these stitches, you normally do a basting stitch where you backstitch at each end, and then you do a basting stitch where you don't backstitch at each end. I skipped the first stitch since I had overlocked my edges and I figured that would just help my fabric stay. And I went ahead adding the basting stitch without backstitching starting from 10 inches from the top and going all the way down to the hem. Then to gather those sides, I pull at one of the strings starting at the top and push the fabric close to the center. And then go to the bottom and pull the same string on the top of the fabric and push the gathers again towards the center and try to evenly disperse them along the way. My goal was to gather these down to 20 inches. 
I repeat this process with the panel that is supposed to go next to it, and then starting from the bottom or the hem, I pin the two panels together all the way to the top. And then I sew them down with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. I took those two panels over to my underskirt and they looked bad. The gathers were not cohesive, there was bulk in the seam, and it just didn't look how I remember my belle ruched skirt looking. So I unpicked that seam and came to the conclusion that I needed to gather each set of panels up at the same time. And to do that, I would need to sew all of the panels together and then gather each seam to create the ruching effect. At this time, I was also concerned that six panels would not be enough, so I cut two more panels, making a total of eight ruched panels. Now I can gather down for reels. This was a bit more difficult because I'm gathering through two layers of cotton sateen instead of one, but I was able to do it. And once I got to the edge of each seam, I would hand tie a knot with the thread, and then I would take it over to my machine and stitch it down. This helped to lock these gathers in place. And now I am finally getting the shape I had desired from the beginning. We are almost ready to add this to the waistband, but first I need to gather down the top of each panel. To do this, I sew in my basting stitch and then gather the fabric down so each panel is about 4 inches wide at the top. Using the waistband piece from the petticoat pattern I digitized, I'll link where you can buy this pattern in the cards and the description, I cut out a piece of fabric and a piece of dream weave for my interfacing. Then I adhered the interfacing to the fabric and I pressed in one side of this waistband. Then I stitched up the sides of the waistband and from there I attached the waistband to the right side of the fabric by machine. I folded over the waistband over and stitched the inside down by hand. I forgot to mention that I stitched the circle skirt and the ruched, ruched skirt together at the top before adding the waistband. After adding hooks, we can call this skirt done, right? not quite done yet. We still need to add one of my favorite things, rhinestones. Once again, all of the rhinestones, stencils, and tools you see me use here, you will be able to find from Rhinestone Genie, linked in the cards as well as in the description. If you use my code Casey, you can get 10% off your order. For the hem of the black circle skirt, I decided I wanted this design in jet black rhinestones. I poured some hot fix stones on my tray with my magnetic stencil and then pushed the stones around until they filled the stencil the way I wanted. Using my transfer paper, I cut a piece the size of this design and then I peeled off the white paper part and placed the adhesive part down onto my stones. Once all the stones are stuck onto the paper, I pulled it up. In this shot, I do accidentally pull up the magnet, but with it, but if you pull it up slow enough and place your finger on the magnet, you can actually keep the magnet down while you pull up just the stones. Now on my fabric, I placed the stencil where I had marked I wanted it to go, then applied heat to the rhinestones with my mini iron. I applied heat and pressure for about 15 seconds per space. I went back over a few sections just to make sure, and once I thought it was sufficient, I pulled up the transfer paper and had a pretty design on the hem of my gown.
All right guys, so that is how I made the skirt or like double skirt or circle skirt and ruche skirt, whatever we wanna call this thing for my Sally ball gown. Next week, so in like a, less than a week, at 12 p.m. Eastern on Halloween, I will be doing my first ever get ready with me and I will be putting on my Sally makeup and getting into the wig and getting ready for my photo shoot, um, which is at like a local place here. Uh, and so we'll be doing a premiere. I've never done a premiere here on YouTube and I'm kind of excited because I would like it to be a thing where like I once in a while can do them to reveal the final like part of a costume and kind of talk to you guys about the final part. Oh, Patreon. Yeah, if you'd like to support my channel, go on, head over to Patreon uh, and sub there. We are getting close to our first goal, which is $100. Once we hit that goal, I will actually list everyone's names here. Probably, I'll work on it, okay? I'll figure it out. It might be like a little scrolling credits thing over my face at the end of this, or like a, a little thank you note or something. We'll figure it out. But anyway, yes, if you would like to support my art over there, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Casey Renee Cosplay to do so. Otherwise, if you like sewing, if you like Disney, if you like historical costuming, if you just like pretty things, like, subscribe, comment below. Once again, the question of the week is, what is your favorite animated Disney movie? Tell me down below. All right, guys, have a great day and happy sewing.